Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 18 and today's node is the Apex Scene Animate Sop. Now to begin working with this node, we're going to go ahead and switch to the Animate Desktop over here. We can just minimize the bottom window, switch to a single view just so that we have perspective. And over here, I'm going to go to our object network. Right over here, we can go ahead and drop an Electra geometry. So test geometry Electra, and then just dive inside. This is going to be set up for use with the KinFX tools. So over here under output, just change this to Apex Scene. When we change it to Apex Scene, it is going to initialize all of the settings that we need to use it with the Apex Scene Animate node. So over here, you can see that it has some geos that are packed. And to actually understand what's going on over there, you can add a new pane over here, go down to animation, rig tree, and inside of here, under the Electra character, there's a rig, a skeleton, some control shapes, and a base shape. This base shape over here is just gonna be the actual skin of the mesh. These are the things that it uses to actually animate. So when we go ahead and use an Apex Animate, Apex Scene Animate, we can plug this first input into the Scene Animate, and from here, we can begin animating. So just click on the left-hand side of here for Animate, and it will now show you all of these control handles. What we can do is also switch this to smooth shaded so that we don't have to see the wireframe. And if you want to see the actual material on this, you can enable it on the right side over here. Now we have a bunch of IK controls that we can use. For example, on the hands over here, you can just click on that, move it around, the center of gravity. We also have poles over here, and these are going to be for the knees and the elbows. So it chooses the direction in which the knees are pointing. Up at the top over here, we just have some clavicle rotators. So those control the shoulders. And overall, we just have a well put together rig. From here, we can begin animating. And so to do that, we would need to keyframe. So as we move this about, we could move it into some position. And then at the bottom here, just press K to keyframe. However, that's only going to keyframe whatever we have selected. If I move over there and click the hand, you can see that this is independent to what I just keyframed. There's none of those green keyframe markers at the bottom on our timeline because it only exists for this one over here. So that hand is not keyframed. So a good way to work with this is to just pin all of your controls over here. You'll see them all pop up in the channel list on the left-hand side. Now, when we make a change and then press K, it'll keyframe all of them. So we press K and all of them are keyframed. What's cool about this is now we can move around and make a change. So move this up and we'll keyframe it up there. Just press K again, right? So we just have that. Now, as you can see, we have this issue where our hands are being left behind because they follow their own IK. A useful thing to do with this is to actually shift click and select multiple handles. So we can go over here, shift click, shift click, and now we have three of them selected. If we try and move them all up, you're gonna have some issues because they're moving in local space. If you want, you can right click over here, change alignment to world, and now we can move them all up together. So now we can do this where we have that at frame one, and then at frame 24, we can move them all up together. So perhaps resetting this, shift clicking on all three of them and moving them up. Now, perhaps that's not exactly what you want. A better way to do this might be to actually include everything in the upper body that we want to move together. So let's go ahead and select the hands and then the torso over here, and then just right click under our selection sets and then just say create set from selected. This is going to create this set one over here and we can just rename this to upper underscore body, right? So now if we click away and then click on upper body, we can select those three all together at the same time. Additionally, you can also add things to a particular selection set. For example, say we want our elbow poles to be added to it, we can do that. So we just select both of them over here, shift click, and then we right click on upper body and just say add selected to set, just like that. So now every time we want to select the upper body, we just select that selection set from the right hand side and move them all together. And we can still move each one individually. So in the top over here of your viewport, you can go over here to locator. This is going to be the next tool that we're looking at. And if we don't have anything selected and we just go ahead and press H, it'll add a locator in the scene for us. And you can use locators as pivot points. You can also use them as selection sets. So if I just go ahead and take these two hands plus that locator, we can go ahead and create a set. We can go and select that hand pull and move it with this as the pivot. One thing that you will note about selection sets and locators like this, is that they actually have a pivot. So if we select any one of these, so the hand pull or the upper body, and the controls that it pivots around can be found if we go over here to our new panes, go over here to animation and just say apex selection sets. 
Under the apex selection sets, you can see we have the upper body selection set and the hand pull selection set. If we extend this Electra and base, you can see that this one over here with the yellow marker, that's going to be the one that holds the pivot. And if we go over here to the Electra and locators, you can see that this locator is what holds the pivot. You can very easily just right click on something else and just make that the pivot if you just say make primary control. So now if we select the upper body, the hand becomes the primary control. If you switch back to the view mode, you will see that your character loses their animation. But don't worry, it is still there. If you go back to the pose mode, it'll show up again. That's just the way that Apex works. Everything is contained inside of this node, and we will have to actually invoke it once we're done with it to basically lock in the animation. So the next thing that we're going to look at is over here under the constraints. And the constraints are going to be useful for constraining any two controls together. So if I grab this hand over here and bring it in and grab this hand over here and bring it in, you can click on one, shift, and then click on the other and then press H, and that will make a constraint connection between the two of them. You can see it by the dotted line that runs between them. And then if we move the one back in pose mode, you'll see that the other is constrained as well. So in this way, they'll always move together. So of course, this is going to be useful if your character is holding something, and all of these are not going to be hard constraints. For example, we can just go back to the constraints over here. If I just click on all controls and press control H, that'll just remove all of our constraints. So now we're back to being able to just move things independently. The next one we're going to look at is this over here. We have the dynamic motion. So to show you the dynamic motion, I'm just going to go ahead and create a very basic jumping animation. So what we're going to do is go over to our dynamic motion tool over here. We're going to select our center of mass and press H. Then we can start a new projectile motion. So press H again, and then go over to the last frame and then press H one last time. And what it'll do is give us this curve, right? So now our character will follow that curve as they jump. And then we can adjust this curve to adjust the height of the jump. So it's a pretty ridiculous looking jump, but what it does is it smooths out our curves for us. And then once we're happy with it, we just press Control G, and then we can just say Bake to Keys. What this will do is it'll add a bunch of keyframes in between for us, and it'll update our animation. So once you have an animation, you can go ahead and use the Scene Invoke, right? So Apex Scene Invoke over here. Take this into first input, then go up here to output all character shapes, and this will now output your animation. You will see that it is still in the form of two pack geos, so what we can use is an unpack folder, just like this. And then from here, just add an asterisk at the top, this will do two levels of unpacking. And then from here, we can just do two more unpacks to get us back to geometry. So now we just have geometry over here. Now the last thing that I didn't really mention is just this option over here for ragdoll physics. The reason I didn't go into it is because it does take a little bit of setup, and I found that there's not too much documentation on it, but a useful thing that you can do is use the configure joint limits node over here. And in the help files of this node, there's actually a lot of useful information. If we go over here, click for help, and then scroll down all the way to the bottom over here, you can click on this example over here and load it. And when we load it into our scene, what we'll have is this over here. This shows you how to actually take this Electra model and apply ragdoll physics to it. You can see over here we have an apex scene animate. And if we take a look at what's happening in here, this Electra doll has ragdoll physics applied. As for working with other geometries or using your own geometry, I would recommend checking out the side effects content library. Over here we have this from Esther Trilch and from William Harley. These two over here are going to be super useful for learning how to use Apex. The Electra rig goes over how to actually create a rig using Apex. Same thing with the Luchador and Chicken. You can also go ahead and download this and use these geometries. They are rigged and ready to be used, so you can mess around with animating using them. Finally, the Apex Pillow and KineFX Apex workflow are also two interesting ones to look into. But that's all for this video. We'll be back tomorrow where we'll be looking at the joint capture by Harmonix app. So until then.